Welcome to the Leading Hope Podcast with Kevin Jack. Your influence will lead people somewhere, lead them towards hope. Everyone has 20 minutes to learn to become a better leader. Make it count. Welcome to Leading Hope with Kevin Jack. I'm your host, BJ Williams, here with my friend and pastor, Kevin Jack. Thank you for joining us and taking time out of your day to become a better leader. We will release a new episode every Wednesday, so we'd love for you to subscribe, share on social media, and bring others along with us on this journey of becoming a better leader. Visit leadinghope.online to get updates and find out more about the Leading Hope community. Today, we're starting a new series on rhythms, and this is episode nine, Understanding Rhythm. Kevin, are you excited about this? I am so excited. Let's do it. Let's do it. But we are always excited about what we're doing. We're never not excited. Hey, thank you so much for listening, for everyone who's taking the time to do that. Our desire within this, uh, we want to make sure we're always growing, we're always getting better. We believe wholeheartedly uh, that your best day should be before you. And so one of the ways that you can ensure that that's happening, that you're always growing and always learning. And so this for us is an opportunity for us to sharpen our skills and refine what we're learning ourselves. And we hope it is in some way beneficial to those uh, who are listening and anyone who you share this with. This is our investment in you. And so we're kicking off this series on rhythm this month. And I'll explain why we're titling it Rhythm in just a second. But I want to start off, and I just want to give you, in this first episode for this series, I want to give you four key ideas on rhythms. And you may have heard us say this before if you've listened to any of the past episodes, that most people make the mistake that they think leadership is about vision. And it is, but the reality is, is that leadership is as much about rhythm as it is about vision. And so here's four key ideas for understanding rhythms. And we're going to spend the bulk of our time on that fourth one. So it feel, if it feels like I'm flying through these first three, there's a reason for it. So idea number one, your rhythms are your habits. The habits that you have are the rhythms of your life. And some people go, well, why don't you just call it habits? I, I think it's a lot more helpful for me to understand it as rhythms because habits are a, are, are a task list that I have to check off. Rhythms shape the flow of my life. And we understand that. We understand that like throughout a day, our energy has a different flow to it. Uh, when we think well has a different flow to it. Uh, when we are best in conversation, in critical thinking, uh, within creative thinking, like we understand that there is a flow to our days. And so our rhythms are are guided by the habits that we have. And so I, I just think it would be a beneficial thing if you shifted that idea from simply, I have habits to these are the rhythms that shape our lives. And as we're entering this new year, and all the things that are come with it, most people say, hey, what are you going to do? What's your goals? What's your resolutions? What's your habits? And I think it would be really helpful if you said, hey, what are the rhythms which we're going to guide you through within this in this four part series? So first one, your rhythms are your habits. Second idea, your habits or your rhythms are constantly being created. Uh, Charles Duhigg in his book, The Power of Habits, says that it takes 21 days to create a habit. James Clear in his book, Atomic Habits, says your habit, a a new habit is being created every time you do something twice, which I I love that idea far more. Instead of the long stretch, it's acknowledging that I can fall into a negative rhythm very, very quickly by repeatedly doing something. But understand that your rhythms are constantly being created, which is so important because idea number three is that your rhythms create the trajectory of your life. You are what you repeatedly do. Your life is the sum total of the things that you consistently engage in over and over again. And so to recap those first three ideas, your rhythms are your habits. Your rhythms are constantly being created. Your rhythms create the trajectory of your life, which brings me to idea number four, which I think is the most important one, is that most people's rhythms are observed and absorbed, not designed. Most people's rhythms are observed and absorbed, not designed. Few people purposefully pick the rhythms that will shape their life and that will form the trajectory of their life. Most people simply fall into the rhythms of the family unit that they grew up in or the friends that they associate with. 
And if you want to end up somewhere on purpose, it is important not just that you have a vision for your life, not just that you have goals for your life, but that you purposefully design your rhythms of your life to meet those goals. So let me give you an instance of this that I think is massive. So I read this study recently that it was talking about health and and the ways in which our, our bodies change and the ways in which we eat and the ways in which we exercise. And it was talking about the difference of the longstanding theory of health being far more genetic than behavioral. And what they found is they said that they would see these families that would have, and understand, first off, I'm not a doctor. So <laughs> there we go. We got that out got there. Good. Second off within there, like, I, I know that I know that there are things that uh, people are more prone to in terms of disease, illness, based upon their genetic makeup. Okay, so I'm not discounting that at all. But I think sometimes people attribute all of their health problems to DNA instead of rhythms, habits, and behaviors. And so the study went through and it said that, that our are things that we are more ch- genetically predisposed to in terms of illness have far more to do with family habit than they have to do with f- the genetics that are passed down from father and mother to child. And it was this idea of saying like, hey, some of the things that you are predisposed to have more to do with the fact that your family has a snack every night and it's usually this kind of snack or you grew up eating this kind of food consistently or you never learn to exercise in this certain sort of way. And that to me, I'm reading this and I'm just going, oh my goodness, that is mind blowing. Because what I realized as, as I'm going through that is that the majority of the things in the way in which I live my life were not purposeful, were not intentional. Yep. They just were that way. So let me give you an easy example. My toothbrush and my toothpaste are in the top drawer. They go, why is my toothbrush and toothpaste in the top drawer? Because that's where my parents was. And when I was a little kid, that's where they put it with mine. Now, I don't know. There may be a better place for that. I, I, don't, I don't know. Maybe it should be bottom drawer. Maybe it should, middle, maybe it should just hide it away, something like that. And you go, what's... And, and I think that there are massive amounts of things all throughout our lives that if you would go throughout your life and you would just simply go, why do I do all these things the way in which I do them? You would realize that you observed those around you And you started doing it. And that was it. And that the majority of your behaviors, the majority of your actions, the majority of your rhythms of your life think how you eat, how you exercise, how you develop, when you go to bed, when you wake up, how much free time you get, how much time you spend towards entertainment versus personal development, how much time you spend towards recreation versus serving those around you. And as you think through these categories and things, I think what most of us would realize is that we weren't intentional. We didn't design those into our lives in any way, shape, or form. We observed those around us, and they were naturally absorbed into our lives. And so in this first one, I just want to call awareness to that. We're going to get in all these other podcasts this month uh, talking about that, of, of designing them and thinking through them. But first one, I just want to set that into you of saying, hey, your rhythms, your habits, your rhythms that set the trajectory of your life. My guess is most of them are observed and absorbed, not designed. Uh, man, you know, we, w- we want to keep this podcast to 20 minutes. This one's going to be a tough one. It really, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like it really is because there's so much great uh, content in this one um, for everyone, especially myself. We talked about, you talked about language matters, and I love the part of rhythm versus habits. Um, let's talk about CR for a second. Celebrate recovery. <laughs> yeah. We talk about hurts, habits, and hangups. They uh-huh. use the word habits. But what would it look like for them to use the word rhythm in that as a way of looking forward what they need to accomplish? Oh, that's fascinating. Do you know what I mean? Like, what would it look like for them to say, because that is really what they're striving through, right? Mm-hmm. The change in their life is a new rhythm. Talk about our CR friends and what you've seen with them. Well, I, what I would think within that, what it would do, and, and I understand the word habit has become so ingrained. And habit is actually, it, it's an evolution of thought, which is a helpful thing. Instead of just, I do this, we understand that it's now part of the makeup of who we are. But I think we always struggle with differentiating what I do and who I am. Mm. And if we actually took that a step further, because 
your habits do become you. But if you took that a step further of switching it from habit to rhythm, we would understand even more for, for a habit to be effective. It's part of your daily schedule. Mm-hmm. Like it's consistent and constant. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yep. And so go. Uh, so this is one of the things, and we've talked about this some before. I found with myself, I am a lot better when I do the same thing every day. Like if I say I'm going to work out three days a week, I'm working out one day a week. If I say I'm going to work out six days a week, I work out six days a week. Like it's just not an option within there because it's part of my rhythm of my daily routine. And so we know willpower is doesn't have a limitless supply. Yeah. And so you would go, so when do we fall into those bad habits, those bad rhythms, those things that become our addictions? It has to do with our daily schedule. Yeah. Like you are most susceptible to a, a spiritual term. You are most susceptible to temptation. Yes. At certain times of the day because of the way in which your schedule set up. That's good. And yep. so I think that could be a massive progression. Yeah, I think that's that's fantastic. That's good stuff. I I was thinking about, we talk about, uh, and this may might be exactly the same, but we talk about we're a people of praise uh, as our church, but it's mm-hmm. not it's not what we do, it's who we are. And that habit versus rhythm is, a habit is what you do, but maybe a rhythm is who you become. Yeah. Oh, I love that. <laughs> I do too. That's fantastic. Uh, so uh, the other thing that you had uh, on here is you are what you repeatedly do. Uh, explain more about that. Talk about more about what that means to everybody as a leader. Like how you lead, what you do in your groups and your teams, uh, you know, what you're completely always looking at is trying to change things up. But if you're doing the same thing over, it's not going to it's not going to mm-hmm. work. Talk more about that as a leader. Uh, the idea that uh, when I first stumbled across this was uh, through Jim Collins's book, Good to Great. And he talks about that idea that greatness is a habit, that greatness is a choice that and he actually steals that idea from Aristotle went way back forget that, of that that greatness is a choice within there. And so and so I think this the strong focus is we look at all the different areas of our lives, how we're trying to lead, our families, what what we're trying to shape within there. One one of the most significant things that we can be to those around us is, and I know this is not a sexy term, is consistent. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. Like no one ever goes like VJ, why did you fall in love with your wife? And you didn't go, because she's consistent. <laughs> like, yeah. no, that's not that's not the case within that. And but but I think that's one of the most massive things that we can offer to those is that we are consistent. That when I get home, I don't want my wife to be concerned about what mood I'm in. Mm. Like, I just want it to be pretty standard. And not that I'm a robot within there. Like, right. that's not the expectation. But, but I think there is a consistency, not just of emotion that we can supply, but, but a consistency of behavior because it makes it easier for people to enter into. People cannot do, cannot follow us if we're not clear about where we're going and what it looks like to follow us into the future. And so if people are confused, like no one's going anywhere with you if they're confused. Yeah. And so by having not just clear vision – but predictable rhythm, we make it easier for people to follow us into the future. Oh, that's very helpful. That's that's very good. Uh, you know, uh, one of the, the last one that we talked about was you said most people's habits are observed and absorbed, not designed. And then you followed that up with something I think is is really something that uh, I'm, I was thinking about. Few people purposely pick their rhythm. And you said, um, you know, well, at the end of the day, we become the environment we live in. Uh, talk more about a specific strategy to change our response to the environment that is attempting to set the rhythm. So uh, I read a book, I think it was this past year. It was uh, called The Tech Wise Family by Andy Crouch. And he talked about this from the lens of uh, designing your environment and just said, our our environments are the environments that we are in, the literal like room that we are in are designed to do something. And if you attempt to do something other than the way in which the room was designed, you're going to consistently fail. So in my family room is a large television, as is in most people's family rooms. And so the majority of the time that we're in that room, we watch TV. Yeah. And I could tell 
like my kids and my wife all day long. We need to read more. We need to have more conversations. We need to play more games as a family. But if the room itself is set up for television, we're going to always gravitate towards television. And so I think in a similar way, we can be designers of our environments. We can be designers of our schedules. We can be designers of every single thing that we do. So it's actually meeting the output that aligns with the goal that we had set. Um, I always think about those environments that we have. It's uh, We talk about as leaders – um, sometimes when we have a season of planning, we need to accomplish something in a set sort of sort of time, a set of time. Mm-hmm. Um, we don't do that here in this building um, at this church. Uh, how, why do you think that's such an effective strategy when we remove ourselves from this environment when we're planning maybe a whole year that we go off site somewhere? Talk about that because that is a rhythm. It's changing the rhythm in which our our week to week is is in this building, but we're yeah. purposely going to move out of this. And I think leaders, if especially uh, some of the companies I've worked for before, if they would do this more often, they would see their impact be much greater. Oh, absolutely. Um, so uh, let me answer it a little differently, and sure. then I'll come right back to that. Um. So every Tuesday, I write a message. I have, and there's at least a day of the week. Sometimes it's Monday, sometimes it's Tuesday. Every Tuesday, I write a message. If I've got content that requires a different, uh, a different structure, a different style, like if there's a message that is outside the norm of what I'm typically doing, I change where I write it. Because I know if I'm in the same environment, I'll gravitate towards the same habits and the same strategy as before. And so I know if I change my environment, I'm changing my perspective. And if I'm changing how I'm thinking, then I'm changing how I'm living. So to go back to the example you gave is we as a staff every year, we get away for two days, three days to plan, to dream, to strategize. And it'd be, it'd be way easier just to meet in a room in this building and everybody go back home. But I know if we meet in a room in this building, we're going to think the same way we have this entire year. Yeah. And getting out of the typical place, getting out of the typical rhythm enables us to think differently than we normally do. Yeah, even things like this podcast, we have uh, purposely not met in the church so that we would think uh, outside of the church itself and think about the uh, other environments in which this podcast could uh, could help people move forward in whatever they're trying to lead. Um, that's fantastic. And then uh, the last thing here I wanted to talk about uh, is the 21 days, yeah. because I think that's so important. We talk about, you know, there's some people say 90 days, some people say 21 days. But the, the fact of the matter is, is and that's both good and bad, mm-hmm. right? Like it takes 21 days to, to, to create a good habit just as much as it takes 21 days to create and start a bad one. So what 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 in someone's mind um, can they do to to make sure they're you use, use the word intentional? How can they be intentional about that thing about the habit creation? So that gets down to a, a point of just saying there are all of these different ways. It when you know what those rhythms are that you want when you're actually designing them, there's a thousand different ways to reinforce it. There's habit trackers that you can buy on your phones. There is The Jerry Seinfeld method, his thing was that he was going to write a joke a day. So he got a calendar up on the wall, and every single time he wrote a joke a day, he put an X on the calendar. And those Xs filled up long enough, and he said, I just didn't want the streak to end. The streak was that this is how Snapchat made it huge. That's true. Is it created streaks within conversations. Yeah. And there's accountability. There's all these other things. One of the things we're doing as a church that we're starting uh, this month is we're starting a 21 days of prayer and fasting. Yes. Because what we really want to see is we want to encourage people to get into Scripture for themselves. And so we're creating a community around it and say, hey, we're all doing this together. The important thing is that we're not all doing this together. That's just the support. The important thing is that someone is doing this individually. And so we're just trying to create as much traction and momentum as we can for an individual to develop the rhythm that they need to get them where they need to go. Yeah, you talked about the 21-day uh, uh, prayer and fasting that's coming up in, in this this uh, month. Um, who, the the Bible app itself actually has streaks in it now because they picked oh, up. Oh, that's awesome. I didn't realize that. Yeah, they that. picked up on that whole thing. Like, hey, this is important to people. Like, it means something for them to keep going. 
Yeah. And to have that in the back of their mind that I did this yesterday, I'm going to do it today. And sometimes people feel like that's like shallow, like, oh, I don't want to do it just to keep the street going. I want to do it because it matters. What? Just, yeah, that'd be better, <laughs> but do it either way. Right. Yeah. I mean, like, you're still doing it. Yeah. Like, uh, <laughs> that makes sense. Look, uh, I think that's the end of our time. What is something that you want uh, someone to take uh, out of this today? Walking away today. This is what I want you to be mindful of. That most of the things that you do, the way in which you live, has been observed and absorbed from those around you. And if you want to uh, get to a different place than simply your friends or family or the people you've spent the most time with, you have to actually intentionally design your habits instead of simply taking them in by osmosis. That's awesome. Hey, thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, make sure you continue to share and, and rate us on all the podcast platforms. We love that you guys are sharing us. We love to hear your feedback. We love that you review this every week. Uh, thank you so much for being uh, part of this online uh, community with Leading Hope. Uh, we can't wait to see you back next week for episode 10, Think Like an Architect. You guys have a great day. We'll see you back next week.